we're going to be defining ways to talk about what pieces make up your particular time and your elephant, where those pieces fit, and how to personally create focus so you can get things done. Uh, time is your absolute most precious commodity, and we're going to work on some productivity tools that are going to bring you awareness of how you can get as much done as possible in as little as 15 minute increment. And basically your garage list mm -hmm. should include everything, everything you have on your to-do list. Your personal, your business, your family. This is where you park the tasks that make up your life. And we're going to customize the classifications. And I was, this is great because both of you are kind of your own, you know, you've got your own businesses going, so you're more solopreneurs. We're going to have an in-depth discussion about the elements of the garage list, how to keep track of those items, how to prioritize and schedule them, and how to execute the plan. It, you know, the, when I first started this, it was plan the work and work the planner. Well, it's real easy to plan it, but execution, sometimes not so much. Yeah. And today's session is you're going to create your own garage list. I've included a uh, aligned pad in your packet. And if you look at handout number one, mm -hmm. that will give you some prompts on how to, okay, on, on, on um, how to help you create the list. And the prompts will also help you identify how you classify your time. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I dropped, this is my favorite time, one of my favorite <laughs> time management pieces is a, is an, is this right here. But again, dropped it in the parking lot. So, uh, Marianne has offered to lend me this. This is a five minute timer. Okay. So, we're, I'm going to give you five minutes. I want you to write down mm -hmm. everything you can think of that you need to do today, tomorrow, this week, this <laughs> month. A everything that comes into your brain yeah. that you need to do, I want you to write down on that list, okay? Sure. Ready, set, go. <laughs> This is going to be a refresher. You don't have to worry about these today. Okay. They'll be part of your homework, but they look like this. All right. And it's critical for defining your time on a go-forward basis. You really need to know how much time you spend in each category, and your categories may be different, so that you can accurately schedule and plan your time in the future. And again, your classifications may be different if you work at a job instead of being a solopreneur. But um, in, my, in, in my world, yeah. I've got production. All right, production, and if you look down here, production is keeping up with your data management system, and we're going to talk about that. It's critical, and I see you, you, we've got a garage list here, and I printed out one for today's seminar, but all of my garage list items are in my computer on my to-do list, you know, but you have to keep up with it. See, these are things I already got done. They, I haven't got them cleared off the list. That's why they showed up when I printed it out today. Bookkeeping and finance is... Not so much for people at a job, except are you the bill payer in your family? If you're the bill payer in your family, you've got to schedule that, those bookkeeping and finance. What we found be, due to time studies is that I have to spend five hours a week, five hours out of every seven days, kept keeping my books caught up, or I get behind. So I know that's something I have to put in the schedule. You, it may be different. We've got some notes on that here. Um, and sales, marketing, networking, mm -hmm. they're all kind of, to me, they're all kind of one and the same. Who do you need to network with? Who do you need to market with? Who are you chasing? How are you getting new clients to the door? How are you getting new customers in the door? What are you doing? How are you doing that? And personal. You mentioned mom. Personal. You've got to budget your personal time. And for those of us that wear many, many hats, um, it's more important to budget that personal time. I have to schedule time for my husband, my friends, my grandkids, myself. You know, those are all personal things. And people that are trucking kids to the soccer game and the practice and this and that, you better, boy, you better have a good schedule there to make sure you don't forget somebody at school or forget about this appointment or that appointment with the kids. Sometimes your the, the, the moms tend to be the master planners of the family, and they've got to make sure everybody gets to where they have to get to and that type of thing. Um, for everybody on the bottom of this list, again, homework, every Thursday or Friday, confirm all of your appointments for the following week. 
always, I always put in 30 minutes of time for that on Thursday. If I'm going to be on the road on Friday, I do it on Thursday. If I'm going to be in the office, I do it on Friday. 30 minutes, confirm. It's going to save you in the end because they're going to say, oh, my God, you know what? I forgot we had, we made that appointment a month ago, didn't we? Uh, I, you know, I overbooked it. Can we change it? Otherwise, you're wasting your time when you show up for that appointment and they don't, and they're not there. Um, for me, and I guess for solopreneur type of people, um, I have a, a respond to non-emergency -client, non client requests within 72 hours whenever possible. I want to review for a moment about how you add to that garage list when you leave here because all of us have a pig pile. We might call it work I'm going to get done someday pile, work I'll get to later pile. I call it my pig pile. I have, this is, this is the extent of the pig pile that I have. So we're going to talk about that. And again, this is homework stuff, or you'll get it to it later. So at least give yourself 30 minutes a week. Doesn't sound like much, mm -hmm. but 30 minutes a week. Because if you don't spend time on your pig pile every week, they, they really tend to grow unless we are ruthless about diminishing them. All right, so you want to sort your pig pile items into appropriate classifications. And let me show you how I do that. I'm going to share mine with you, so, and we're going to set the timer. That's right. So I use little sticky notes, and let's. I'm going to make some room here. I use little sticky notes. Okay, so top of the pig pile. We're only going to take five minutes. Is Google Apps right for my business? All right. Well, you know what? This to me is something. It's research and development. I'm not going to get to it today. I don't want to forget that because I think it's important. So that's going to go in the R&D pile. Okay. This is a guy that sent me something back in September of 09. It's time to file it, pile. I've never gotten back to him. I feel bad about that, but it's going in the filing pile. Um, this is a Senate bill that changed things in the government. I need to include this in my, um, my work. So this is actually, this needs to go on the garage list. All right, because I need to include this in my list. So I need to update my list based on the information. So that is a to-do list. This is about annuals from the house of the side of the road. So you know what? This is going to go in the filing. It's going to go in the garden filing folder. I'll get to it next season. This was an article about the secret to having happy employees. I've already used elements about this. Happy employees it says, how do you have happy employees? You fire the ones that are unhappy. Eventually, eventually. So again, filing because I've already used that information. This was an R. Uh, this was what did I take this out for? I took this out for. Oh, uh, I took this out because. I'm planning to do work with the Barbara Harris Camp and Conference Center. That goes in the garage list because that's information on that center. I need to call her because I got a referral to her. All right. And let's see. See? All this stuff oh, no. happens. It falls out. Mm -hmm. This is my pig pile. All right. <laughs> this is about using constant contact instead of my newsletter. And I know that Hannah Grimes uses constant contact. Is that something I need to do? Oh. Yeah, someday. It, it goes in the R&D mm -hmm. pile. I'm not going to do it today. This is talking about going green, what kinds of things we can do to green up our environment. Well, I've used some of that element. It goes in the filing pile. I'm not going to work with it again. This is information. Okay, this is data entry. I've got to add this guy. We bought our sales for the sailboat from this guy. So this is data entry. I want to add him to my database. That goes in the garage pile because it's something I have to do. These were, oh, this was OSHA's targeted list of businesses in 2009. We pulled it off the website. Do I want to chase after these people? Mm-hmm. That goes in the garage list. So, but did I get to it yet? No, I haven't, but I'm going to. This is a webinar that I took from AdvoCoach, different kinds of things that I could do. All right. That's going to be R&D because I'm not getting to it today. Oh. This was something Carol did for me. And you know what? We've already done that. We needed those. So, trash. <laughs> trash. Okay. Again, uh, labor law training. Oh, 
last one was in June. Guess I didn't make it to any of those. Trash, okay? Because sometimes you're going to find in your pig pile, these were events that I was going to go to. We're gonna, I'm going to give you some useful techniques and constraints, all right, for this, just for the day list. Um, we're going to set up just for today, and obviously we're setting up for tomorrow in this list here. So some useful techniques. Book 80% of your available time. 80% of your available, this is, this is a huge piece of this. Because if you've got five hours, 80% of that is four hours. All right? So you can say, okay, I'm going to do this for an hour. I'm going to do this for an hour. I'm going to do this for half, half hour increments. Mm -hmm. All right? Then you've scheduled in time for go to the bathroom, get a drink, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Or you've also built in a little bit of a little bit of uh, spare time for those interruptions. So it also says at the bottom of this, use the rule of three. You should have no more than three items, and these may not be your categories, mm -hmm. but you've got some. Who are you? Who are you? Who do you owe work to? It's either a customer, a client, or, or maybe a networking, a marketing person. Who do you owe work to? What things need to be on the research and development? This kind of falls into the, falls by the wayside sometimes because we don't have time for that. Do you owe anything in financial? What do you owe in personal? Research and development could be production. So you it could be. No, more than three per box. no, you shouldn't put more than three per box. And sometimes you won't even have three because I've only got four hours of time. All right, and I know that the two client projects I have are both going to take up a full hour. I'm only going to put two, two, two projects in there because they're going to take up the bulk of my time this afternoon. So, no more than three items. Estimate how much time each action is going to take and how much time you have available tomorrow. So, you really, truly need to develop a clear understanding of how much time it takes you to perform different tasks. You can do time studies very, very easily. All you have to do is document. It's all about documentation. So on a go-forward basis, you can document, all right, I spent, um, let's see, we, uh, Andrea picked the kids up at 7.30 a.m. this morning. 8 o'clock, 8 to 9, I was polishing my time management workshop information. Mm -hmm.